Hey everyone, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly, and we are back. But before we go all the way back, yes. have you subscribed to our show yet? Mm -hmm. If you, the answer is no, do so now. Please, yes. come on, don't be like I that. I know. Or Kellogg from Fallout 4 will get ya. Keith Farley is back. Here we go. <laughs> Let's, Let's get, get buzzed. Buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now. Prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. What do you feel makes you uh, <laughs> an effective coach? I mean, because I don't think that just anybody can coach. Like, for yeah. example, and I'm not putting anybody down, but, you know, there are certain people that mm -hmm. might be, you know, an actor and they have a, an acting career and then things are going slow and they're like, oh, you know what, I'm going to coach. I coach now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I haven't been able to book anything. Um, and so there, but there's some people that are like really effective. What do you feel make, uh, makes you an effective coach? A focus on storytelling. I'm also a writer, I'm a director, and I'm an actor. Um, <clears throat> and all of those are about storytelling. So I, I think I have a pretty good understanding of story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's my focus. Good, because is that's making important. sure that stories are, are clearly told. And yeah. whether yeah. you're directing or acting or writing, it, the job is to story tell a story yeah, yeah. tell yeah. me a story so that I think is if I can instill that in students and I'll tell you I mean again there's the flip side of this is the same thing as we talked about with the announcer yeah right that there's a place for the announcer that energetic wake up and call now is great same thing is if you can figure out the techniques you figure out the Disney style the Cartoon Network style, the Nickelodeon style, um, you can do very well. Anime too, I mean, anime is so, people love anime because it's so, yep. it's just laid out for you. Yeah, it's gonna it's, go the same way every yeah. time and it's got that reassuring yeah. predictability. Um, and a lot of rock and roll. And a lot of rock and roll. Mm. Anime rocks. Yeah, yeah I know. It's like it. any anime. That, I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 It's fun. I know. Um, but and you can you can again sort of hone a technique that will get you by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the folks that really last the the opportunity to do more than just pull a paycheck is in storytelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. transformative. I mean, and again, it comes back to like growing up in the church and the theater, um, where I went one. Remember going one day, one Sunday morning from eleven o'clock church, right across the street to Sacramento State, where I had a two o'clock matinee, yeah. and being like, "Wait, <laughs> all these people come and they sit in rows, yeah. and then we get up and we we say some stuff and we sing some songs, and when it's really good, it changes people's lives. Yeah, and when it's really bad." You never want to go back. Totally. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the idea. I mean, that's the the higher calling. Yeah. Um, is being a good storyteller. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of some common things that might hold an actor back from being from you know from being great instead of just good? Like it, while you're teaching and discovering people's weaknesses and strengths, mm -hmm. what do you feel are some common weak, we, not, not even really weaknesses, but obstacles, but the obstacles yeah. that, that, could, that, that if they just changed or, you know, they Let would change everything. Yeah. You said it. What, um, what is that? Let it go. Let it go? Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Sponsored by Frozen. Oh, um, happy to help. I love that. Let it go. So, in but, case but, you've gone 20 okay, minutes so without hearing that, that song. Means, but I know. For people to, that don't we'll know what underneath. let it go means, what does let it go mean? So often, we, we're in our own way. Yeah. I, we talked. I talked about this with a with class last week. Yeah. The idea of of allowing emotion to happen. Bingo. We don't. We don't get there by forcing. Right. We get to these grand emotions. We get to SpongeBob SquarePants by getting out of the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's it's counterintuitive in a way, but it's like the you probably have a dimmer switch on some of these lights. Yeah. yeah. Would you like us to dim the lights for you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not sure we've talked uh, long Keith enough. Keith is feeling yet. a little sexy today. <laughs> we never know where things are going to go around here. We just <laughs> go with the flow. No, but yeah. Think. So dimmer. You were yeah, going let somewhere it go. before yeah. I interrupted yeah. you. Yeah. The dimmer switch, if you, it, in order to for, put more light through these lights, 
you reduce the resistance. It's called a resistance dimmer. Right. So more energy is available the more you reduce resistance. Mm -hmm. And that's a tricky thing to teach. Yeah. You know? It sure is. It's man. a really yeah. tricky thing to teach. And when it when you see somebody get it, it's an ama it's really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. I bet, man. It mm -hmm. really is. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And that's the sort of grander thing. And then again, the, but the technical facility is part of it too. So I'm training yeah. I didn't understand that word. You swallowed this word. I'm I'm working on the technical skills too. We did um, uh, D. Bradley Baker on his I want to be an actor dot com yep. website talks about picking up Fox and Socks, and I was just kind of looking at D's website, you mm -hmm. know, um, and I thought, hey, that's a great idea. So all the students got Fox and Socks on the first night. Nice. And that's mm -hmm. one of the exercises when we came back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was this book is a, is a series of tongue twisters, and it right. requires you to have a technical facility with your voice. Yeah. Right. But it's also a battle between the fox and Mr. Knox. Mm -hmm. And Knox is getting more and more frustrated. So there's something that's emotional to play there. There you go, yeah. And mm -hmm. to be able to create two distinct characters. It's just two. So it's, it's simple in that regard. But yeah, now you have the ability to switch back and forth between fox and Knox. There will be chaos on the interwebs if we don't talk about Sane and Kellogg. Well, my, my <laughs> <laughs> the assassins okay, we in my back pocket. Yes. Yeah, the assassins in your back you, pocket. You do good villain. So much fun. You do. There's so much fun. I mean, and what's nice, and, and you know, we've heard other villain, you know, portraying actors say, you know, obviously you can't just play the evil, you can't just play the bad, because then it's just like, yeah. You know, you, you're so good at making them really juicy and layered. And what are, like, what are your sort of tips or keys or things that you think about when you get this seemingly one-dimensional, it's a bad guy, it's an evil guy. I How do you say... I have say... been really lucky. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the writing for both Thane and Kellogg is superb. Right. So, <clears throat> again, it's what we talked about before. It was when you're working with great material, mm -hmm. you can get out of the way. And just let it, there's not much to do. Right. Except be, is to get be there. Get out of the way. Don't resist. Let it go. Um, grow the emotional that's already there in the dialogue. Right. So mm -hmm. fortunately, both those characters are really well written. Um, <clears throat> I got a great piece of direction on the first day with Kellogg, which was noir. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of went down into the... You know, just imagine a dark street with a, you know, a street right. light yeah. and a saxophone playing in the background. Yeah. And just kind of, yeah, but I just kind of got into this thing. Gosh, which Keith, works. I got that audition and I didn't book it. And it's so weird because, I mean, we so get the same kind and of You and me, I know, we're duking it out. <laughs> but I'm glad you got <laughs> it. Well, thanks. I mean, because I really nice was like, oh, my, my nemesis, Keith, will get this one. <laughs> I'll get the next one. <laughs> oh, I love it. And obviously Thane in the Mass Effect games. Thane's great because... So loved. He really, your fans love him. Really, an interesting character. I was at, at PAX East, and when you have when someone stands up in the audience and says, "I was going through a rough patch in my life, mm. and you really helped me get through it." That's just like Phew. it's astonishing because yeah. you know we work in in a in a little tiny room with no windows. Yeah. And we do this this thing, and to to realize that it actually touched somebody, um, and helped them in their lives is an amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. And people come up and you know talk about how sad they were that he died, and mm -hmm. um, it's great. You really you get an opportunity in video games to invest in characters yeah. when they're done really well. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, the opportunity over, and this is what happened with Final Fantasy too. People with fifty, seventy five, a hundred hours with these guys. And all the dialogue that we recorded that helps you feel like you're part of a crew mm -hmm. yeah. um, really pays off uh, in, those, in those moments where you want epic emotion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you Fab. also are a wonderful writer, and I wanted to put out there for people to um, know more about your musical that you yeah. wrote, Bat Boy the Musical. Yeah. It's such, it's a talk, I, I don't want to say anything, I want you to talk about it. How, like, where the vision for it came from and how people can get it. 
it was a long, long time ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 1993, I was out in the desert shooting a feature film uh, with a buddy of mine, Brian Fleming, who'd written and directed and cast me in this film. <clears throat> and we were out in the desert for two weeks on set. And I'd come into to Palmdale to pick up a pack of smokes or something, and there on the was that child found in cave, the Weekly World News. Right. Which is an old, it was the, when the National Enquirer. I saw that, by the way. Went <laughs> color, they just kept the black and white printing press and turned yeah. it into the Weekly yeah, World yeah. News. Yeah. So I was like, oh, these are always fun in college. You know, we always go to parties and read Ed Anger, who was like their advice columnist. Mm. And so this will be fun to have on set. So we brought it out to the set. And, uh, the production, the one corporate sponsor that this little film had was Budweiser. So we had 24 cases of beer <laughs> delivered to the location in the desert. And we would sit there after we'd wrap for the day and we would just sit around the campfire drinking free beer and we started making up songs and stories about the Bat Boy. Mm. And this went on for two years. We just would have parties and the rap party for the film, we'd just get around the piano and just improv Bat Boy songs and stories. And it became kind of a thing. And one night after a party, I was just sitting out on the front porch with Brian, and I said, how do we do this? If we wanted to make this into a real thing, how do you do that? And he said, well, ask for the rights. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we have to do, because there's no sense in putting any time right, into this right. thing right. if we can't actually do it. So I was a member, I'm a member of the Actors Gang Theater Company, and we had, a, we had Letterhead <clears throat> that had Tim Robbins at the top, and we had Annette Benning and Robin Williams, and all these big names. So I got a piece of letterhead, and I was like, Dear Weekly World News, <laughs> we'd like to put on the show at the Actors Gang, and it'll be a small little theater thing, and if it grows, we'll come back and we'll work out a deal at that time. Would it be okay? And they wrote back and said, Sure. So we got the rights, and uh, we wrote this show, opened Halloween night, 1997, and it was a big hit. Um, and uh, we were invited to New York uh, with the Richard Rogers um, Foundation, gave us a couple of grants mm -hmm. to develop the show in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, we opened off Broadway in 2001 and had a really nice uh, nine month run off Broadway. We opened on the West End in London in 2004. And the show's been out there, it's being produced at community theaters and yeah. professional theaters yeah. and high schools yeah. and colleges. All over the country, it's been translated into Japanese and Korean and German and Spanish. And wow. um, you guys created monsters. We did. They created bad boys, right? <laughs> little bad boys, little freaks, yeah. little freakish followers. So yeah. it's been a it's been a great journey. Yeah. Um, Is there any more things you're gonna write and put out there? I've got a couple of things in the in the trunk mm -hmm. that are uh, that are sitting there that are ready to go. Yeah. We've got yeah. it. We've got a couple of things, a couple of irons in the fire Excellent. that I'm not at liberty to discuss. Of course but, not. Um, yeah. Why would you? Uh, <laughs> it's your personal, your personal NDA. Uh, yes, yes, indeed. I, I've imposed we respect it upon that. myself. We respect hey, that. Hey, what haven't you done yet with your career and your life that maybe you would want to accomplish in the future? A symphony. Hmm. No. Uh, Be in the symphony I don't or have conduct the, chops. the symphony. No. Yes. Uh, He's got both. the trombone, the Down ukulele. Beat. That's You've right. Got I got the trombone, the ukulele, piano. one man band. Yeah. You... Um, I would love. I mean, I've, it's been great. I've been able to direct animated series. Yeah. Um, I've been able to direct and be in video games. I'd love to. I would really love to. Um, to be part of a crew on an animated series. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a goal that. Yeah. As that, as a as a talent or director? as a talent. Cool. I've done the directing thing. I've done yeah, that a couple yeah, yeah. of times. That's one that I'd really like to do. Um, I'd also, it's really funny because lately, I think I'd love to be back on stage even, mm -hmm. which is not the way you keep your house payments. But yeah, but it's like this little <laughs> bug no, There's a little bug yeah. that right? just doesn't go away. But the yeah. live performing, you can't beat that. You can't. That instant, immediate. Yeah. It's just, it's... And I probably, I, I need to... I need to get in front of a crowd with the ukulele. Mm. I do a lot of work at home with the yeah. ukulele, and when I do play out, I always have a blast. Yeah, That's so cool, But man. it's the sort of thing like getting up, and that's the thing that, I think that's the one thing that may unlock a lot for me, because I'm just terrified of it. Mm -hmm. The idea of singing in front of people. Right. And being here with you as a, someone who does it beautifully and brilliantly. Thank you, Thank you. I appreciate um, it. I have to say, though, that 
every time, and I've been doing this for like five billion years, but every time that I get on stage um, with Rock Sugar, I'm still, I'm not scared, but I'm nervous. Yeah. And it might be the excitement, but man, it's like I could have just gone to the bathroom and peed and I'm like, oh, I got to be so bad, right? And you're <laughs> yes. on stage, but after that first song, right. yeah. you're at home. Well, nervousness is just another flavor of excitement. You know? Right. And I think if you get like that, yeah, one hour. I, I think that then, you know, if you don't get that. Yeah. I mean, whenever, if you do a concert yeah. Yeah. with your ukulele, yeah. are you going to invite us? Front row. Absolutely. All okay. right. Yeah. I've never been to a ukulele concert. If you stage dive onto us, we'll catch you. Maybe we'll have Mickey Caputo playing bass in the background. Stand if Mickey up, wants okay. to come, Mickey's always <laughs> welcome. <laughs> right. Little stand up, you can bass action. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. So, Keith. Yes. Oh, I, mean, I want to no, thank cute. you for all the incredible work you do in the trenches at SAG-AFTRA for We Union Actors. Thank Absolutely, you for yeah. that. You're such an amazing advocate and such a voice of sanity and reason and hope and positivity. What do you see? What's what's ahead for for the union Our with union, voiceover? Yeah. yeah, I think um, I'm really encouraged. Um, by the direction that the union is is moving in right mm -hmm. now. There's a, a real focus on community organizing. There's a real focus on getting the union in touch with the people who run it, yeah. Yeah. which is the membership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all pay our dues totally. twice a year. Yep. And to understand and advocate for what actors want is what the union should be doing right. and what they're, they're really trying to do. So I'm really encouraged by um, the culture that I think is growing within the union. Um, I'm really excited to see we're doing another vocal stress panel mm -hmm. in uh, March where we have Dr. Rena Gupta. Oh man, I, she's goddess. supposed to be amazing, right? She's yes. unbelievably good. I know, we wanna have her on. We're coming for yeah, you. Dr. You're gonna Gupta. be on VO Buzz Weekly. Yeah. Um, have her bring the thing where she can scope you. Oh. I don't know, if it's a big, oh. it's a big thing, but at one of the panels we did recently, she actually live scoped an actor who'd been screaming, two <gasps> sessions, eight hours, and she put the thing, and you could see oh, it up on the big screen, wow. his vocal cords, and she's like, yeah, you got a little bit of damage right here, you got a little, just eight hours, she goes, it's, it'll heal, I just prescribed seven to 10 days of vocal rest. Vocal Oops, rest, yeah, yeah. like that's gonna work. Don't work for seven to 10 days, Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you'll be fine. Uh, and that's what we're dealing with, Yeah, yeah. Is, is getting the word out um, to actors, to developers who are our partners, yeah. to the producers who are our partners, to help mm -hmm. everyone understand that we're all working together to make yeah. to make this product, that we're yeah. all committed to having it be um, as great as it can be. Yeah. So that's going on. We're going to do contract um, negotiations. We're reaching out across the country um, to try to make it as easy for producers to hire and employ union actors, trying to get mm -hmm. rid of some of the red tape. Mm -hmm. um, and, and things that are non-union can easily be converted to union. And I think easy peasy. people don't realize that. And I think that the more producers and talent buyers are educated in that Absolutely. regard, yep. that's gonna make a big difference. Yep. Yeah. And there's a lot of, of, of folks, I think, who, rightly so, I mean, I think when we were two separate unions, there was a lot of sort of right. back and forth, yes. there were a lot of infighting and it was, an easy divide and conquer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and now since the merger has happened, and you know, it takes a while to get up on your feet, but sure. I think the focus is in the right place. And I got my fingers crossed at the future. I know they're committed to making it easy to work with talented performers. Yeah. And we're trying to also grow the tent so that we can we can invite those talented performers who are doing real well non-union mm -hmm. to Come on over, yeah. um, and reap the rewards of, yeah. of union yeah. membership. I think that's, that's a big really key important. right there. No yeah. matter so where you live in the yeah. country, no matter where you live in the and country, that's we want to be inclusive. There's so much that's going on in in, in L.A. And New, and New York. Yeah, that it's time to look at Chicago. It's time to look at Texas. Yeah, yes. it's time to look at Florida. It's yes. time to look yeah. in the middle of the country. It's mm -hmm. time to really, again. As the, organiz as the organizing starts to happen, as we can understand the people who are working in this community, yeah. okay, we're set. Now we can go to this community, and now yeah. we can take that exactly. to this community. And the goal, I think, is again, to 
have a union that's that's responsible mm -hmm. to its membership mm -hmm. and yeah. to have a union that makes it easy for folks exactly who yeah. want to use yeah. talented performers to use them. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's in cool. layman terms, uh, SAG AFTRA is going viral. <laughs> in the it's, best way. It's going to be without, everywhere. Without no. penicillin. Yeah, yeah, with no penicillin. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> man, I got to tell good. you, man, you are so cool. Thank you so cool. much for gracing our set and our show with your awesomeness. I know. I've been. I've had the secret desire to be in this chair for a good. long time now. Does it I'm, feel like you thought it was I'm just you. thrilled to be here, you guys. I, you just, I feel handsome. like I'm in a... In a in, well, you keep saying that. I know Every, he It's is. all good. Okay, yeah. do people it's tell you... That you look like Chris Noth, Mr. Do. Big. Doesn't he look like he Mr. Big from Sex and the City? He gets it probably every day. Of course, Chris man. Noth? They do. Yeah. It's, it's, there was <laughs> one, like... I'll, tell you, I'll tell you this story. This <laughs> oh, is one of my, this one of my favorite story. Chris Noth rec recognizing stories. <laughs> yeah. I was in New York. We were doing Bat Boy uh -huh. uh, workshop. I was in the bathroom, and I'm standing it at the... It always happens in the bathroom. I'm doing my thing. This guy comes in uh -oh. and stands next to me, mm. and he starts going... That's never weird. And I'm sorry. I finish. I head to the sink, and he goes, "Excuse me." Oh, jeez. He goes, "I know that this is weird, but I just have to let you know that my wife is going to be so excited that I peed next to you." <laughs> I said, "Great." I'll That's take that as a compliment. Lovely. Yeah. I think you think I'm someone else, <laughs> but maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe he caught a glimpse and, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we, won't, we won't know what he's glimpsing. But the anyway, sideways glance. on that maybe note, he wasn't a, this a is weird... an interesting segue, oh, yeah. Mr. DJ. Yeah, a great note to finish on, um, right? Oh, my God. If you could give <laughs> a glimpse, no. If you could give advice to your 20-year-old self, what would you tell him? Work harder. Hmm. Just do what you're doing and don't stop. Yeah. Which I think my 20 year old self was 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 doing. It sounded like you were yeah. pretty. Busy, I was working man. pretty hard. Yeah. yeah, I was working pretty hard. But that's the key. I mean, that's yeah. It's like I also I love golf, and um, I think it was Sam Snead. Someone out there will know, um, who said golf is a game of luck. The more I practice, the luckier I get. Not exactly. Yeah. And I think that is, there is no other, everyone that comes for coaching, and you know, you know this too, yeah. you both know this, mm -hmm. they're looking for the magic key that unlocks. Yes. yes. I want to book everything. Mm -hmm. So I can book every single job that I go out for. I want the magic key. What is it? And they want you or me or yeah. whoever to, to give them the magic key. And there, there isn't one. Mm -hmm. There's just honing and working on your craft. Yeah. So... Yeah. I always feel like I could work harder. I always feel like there's something else that I could be doing mm -hmm. just to, to, to be better at what I do. Exactly. And I think that's the yeah. key. Good. You know it as a musician, too. The more you practice. Absolutely. I mean, you could become so curious. good yeah. that when you pick up that instrument, people are just like, oh, my God, what mm -hmm. was that? Right. You know, and if you can become that good a voice actor where people go, what was that? Yeah. But early, <laughs> early in the practice, it's the technical proficiency, yeah. right? Right. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. once you oh, get yeah. the technical, once you get your technique, then you can play. Then you bring that your gives you the get freedom. out of your way. Yeah. What was right. the term that you used earlier? Let go. Yeah, turn down the re resistance. Allow, yeah. Al mm -hmm. allow. Yeah. You open up. You you take yeah. the resistance down, and the energy comes flowing through at a higher rate. Yeah. Very cool, man. But you gotta Such. have the technical facility too. Yeah. Right, Keith Farley, Mystery question from the cube. Ooh. Ooh. Mystery question from the queue. I love Pick this a card. Part. Pick a card. And why don't you read it in one of your famous uh, villain voices? Mm. I don't think I have my glasses on me. Let's see if you I can. You want me to read it to you? Oh, then you can't read it. Well, you... I got it. He got okay. it. He I got, got it. It's just far it. enough and large hold, enough. You want me to hold it for you? God bless you. No, no, no. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> As the Krios, in what era would you like to have grown up? Mm. Mm. I think I would dig. I think I would dig early mid 20th century. Yeah? Okay. I think I would dig. Yeah. I think I would dig the 40s. I love. I could see that. We just watched um, Marlena Dietrich movies uh, over the weekend with my yeah. kids. And the idea of the supper club, 
Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. where you go and you have a martini and you. Oh, everyone's I can see in you with the jacket, the ascot, yeah. the oh yeah. And people come out in banana suits mm-hmm. and and dance yeah. and stuff. Yeah. That's, I could dig that. Okay. I could dig that if we could if you could take away like, uh, like the racism and all right. the all the other <laughs> stuff and kind of go back there and let it be uh, inclusive and delightful and fun. Yeah. Yeah. I I I think that would be a good a good era. Beautiful. You know what? You're a good guy, You're man. You're a good era. And you know what else? You're pretty smart. Mm-hmm. So not only are you good looking, a <laughs> cool dude, Handsome, and talented, smart, smart, and talented. Is this how funny, this show works? You just you warm, bring people in kind, and you just love on them? Generous, I get used gracious. to this. No, seriously, man. Thank you yeah. for, for coming Delightful. out here and sharing Keith with us. Farley. Again, this has been an honor Treat. for me and a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for everything and just so much happiness and abundance to you and your family. I love and you both. You're always welcome Crazy here. You, you yeah. can't get rid of us now. All right. We're, vi- uh, we're the virus you can't get rid of. Yeah, baby. <laughs> uh, 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 let's hey, do it. Nah. Keith Farley, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're going to see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Hey, it's Keith Farley, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. Here's a little tidbit for you. Keep doing the work, and the work will come. Well, that concludes our two-part episode with the awesome Keith Farley. So great. What a Love cool him. guy. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did, and we're going to be back next week with an all-new View of Us Weekly for you, so stick around. Yes, and leave your questions and comments below, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yeah, yeah. why not? Why not? We love you guys. Thanks for watching, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.